Hello everybody, I'm Tom and you are watching me play Divinity Original Sin 2. In the last episode, we explored the vast majority of this place, we've got a little bit left to go, and by far the most interesting place left to go. Um, also, I believe there's a relatively big fight up here that we have to do first, but I can't remember rightly. I think I have to kill all these people. What are they up to? I could engage him in conversation. The Magister looks you up and down with utter dispassion. You should not be here. Hmm. Growl that you have as much right as anyone else. If she feels otherwise, then she'd be better be ready for a fight. Hmm. The Magister's hand reaches back for her weapon. Intruder! Indeed. Intruder. Die. He has more initiative than me. That's a rarity. Nevertheless. Uh, let's go up here. This is one of the best chain lightnings I'm probably ever going to do. Insane. Um... Got a bunch stunned. Insane amounts of damage, by the way. Don't really care if that guy's shooting me. Got a crit. But, you know. I have this. Ludicrous amounts of control. Absolutely ludicrous. Um, I probably should have teleported this fucker down here first, but whatever. The amount of control is just over the top ridiculous. Frozen them both again. Absolutely ludicrous. Can't believe she's not dead yet. Just shoot her. Why not? Still not dead. Whatever. I burned cage there because I could more than I had to. Um, do you still have magic armor? Not enough. Worm tremor him. He's entangled, he can't do a damn thing. Absolutely insane how easily that fight went. To the point that I don't really believe how easily that fight went. So much control. Look at that. Absolutely insane. Alright, cool. So that took like less than five minutes, that fight. That's... Considering how many enemies there were there, that's pretty insane. We got a fish, which is weird. Alright, so we want to loot all these things. 
Also, there's clearly a breakable wall down there. You all saw it. I saw it too. She doesn't need to climb up with me. Alright, so there's a bunch of barrels over here. Impressive. A barrel filling machine for the oil, I believe. Indeed. He is correct. I'm finally carrying too much. <laughs> finally, I'm carrying too much. Insane that it took as long as it did, but it did. Um, I think the easiest way to do this is just give her some armor. And I think I'm fine. Yeah, that'll do for now. Um, so, there's a damaged oil pump here. I believe if we go through this, we'll be able to figure out how to actually fix it. Very well. Now, I believe that book that we just picked up is an oily book. Notes on automating oil barrel creation. The only thing that will save my life is the knowledge of those ordered... Uh, sorry. Uh, the knowledge that those order puppets don't have yet, at least. I hope so. Machine restart sequence. Ember. Sapphire. Emerald. There's also an image of a garnet at the bottom marked with a big red X. Ember. Sapphire. Emerald. I know what I need to do now. Um, I will read that again in a minute. That's potentially better than hers. Two intelligence, one con, 20 air resistance. So I lose bone cage by doing this, but I think it's worth it. Also, looks fucking cool. I love those fucking ridiculous pauldrons. It looks amazing. Uh, that's really good. I think I'm going to keep it just because of how cool it is. Um, let's get rid of that. Probably shouldn't be doing combining now, but I feel like I should be because I always want to combine things. Grab myself a bit more bone dust. Um, let's read that in a second. Just make sure Ember, Sapphire, Emerald, don't use Garnet. From somewhere deep within the inner workings of the machine comes an irregular clanking sound, then a weak gurgle. Inoperable, it seems. Um... Ember, Emerald, Sapphire. Yellow lever. It seems to have the pipe flow. Use it. The machine churns into life. Gears rotate and pistons hiss from somewhere within its metal housing. It settles into a slow metallic chug, ready for the next lever, perhaps. Green. I can actually just check this. Ember, sapphire, emerald. So blue, then green. Good to know. Lucky I checked. Blue lever. It seems to open the expulsion hatch. The machine churns into life. Gears rotate and pistons. It settles into a slow metallic chug. Ready for the next lever, perhaps. Uh, the green lever. It seems to be an oil release mechanism. Likely the last one to be used. Pull it. The machine churns into life. Gears rotate and pistons hiss from somewhere within its metal housing. The machine rattles, grinds and hisses for a protracted moment, building in intensity. Then settles down into a steady mechanical thrum. Functional by the sound of it. It's working. Indeed. So, the way that this works, by the way, So we're taking regular barrels and turning them into oil barrels, is what we're doing. Fantastic. So we now have all these oil barrels, which Losa should be able to pick up most of them. Boring. Cool. She can't walk, but whatever. Uh, also, I'm going to do some spirit vision here. 
talk to this lady. The spirit of a white Manchester scowls at your presence. Get away from me, sorcerer. Filth. Demand to know what's going on here. You'll get nothing out of me. Nothing. Tell her if she doesn't tell you what she, uh if she doesn't tell me what she knows, I'll consume her source, her spirit, and consign her to oblivion. What? No, wait. I'll tell you. We had orders to bring down the wall. They thought there was more to find beyond it. That's all I know, I swear. The spirit meets her fate with an intense scowl. <laughs> I only lied a little bit. Alright. So I'm gonna come over here. Let's avoid any open flames around this knob. The whole point of coming over here was the fact that I could then teleport with Loisa. If you run back to Loisa, it doesn't really work. Alright. So the point of what I was doing here. Very dangerous to stack them like this, but I'm going to keep doing so. Fantastic. Alright, so. Most from the Red Prince. Let's run the fuck away for a, for a, a long time. Uh, while we're here, may as well loot that weaponized monk. It had nothing. Pointless. Absolutely pointless. Let's come up here. Apologies if you can hear that a really annoying phone. Nevertheless, I want Sir Lorek to get the fuck out of there and he won't because he's a fucking idiot. Teleport to me, Sir Laura. Teleport to me, Solora. God damn it. There we go. Alright, uh, so I'm gonna use Loisa to do this, because Solora will follow me otherwise, and I don't want him to die. And he very easily could if he's a fucking idiot, like he usually is. Alright. So I should have, like, a scroll or something. That'll work. It's a pretty big fire. Fantastic. Still exploding, but you know, we'll we'll see how this goes, I suppose. Where the fuck Loiser is going? Let's head over here. Uh, Loisa, you may as well get your source point back. Fantastic. Alright, so, let's head this way. And go through this door that we just blew up. Uh, I'm going to give it a quick save, because from memory there's a relatively hard fight in here. Also, lore dump extraordinaire in here, including... I may as well read this. Tales of the Seven Gods. That's what I was going to read, and I forgot. Tales of the Seven Gods. The Seven Gods were still young when they decided that each of them should have their own race to guide through the eternal flow of time. And thus it happened that Ralik, the most powerful of all gods, became the patron of the humans. The burly Duna created the dwarves in his own likeness and even lived alongside them in their mountain caverns. Tersindilius, the poet, went into the woods and created the elves. He blessed them with near immortality and wisdom. The reptile goddess Solstissa wished to to command a proud warrior race, and thus she created the lizard people, fierce fighters from the wastelands. The god Vrogir, renowned for his brutality and violence, created the orcs, and enslaved them for more than 300 years before he left Rivalon. Xanteza, the goddess of mirth and laughter, wanted an intelligent race versed in the arts of magic around her. She created the imps, who were talented magicians and engineers. 
The goddess Amadia was an outsider, preferring to live in complete solitude. As the centuries passed, the six races spread over the continent. One day, Amadia's dalliance with a wizard resulted in the birth of, a se of several demigods. She granted her love immortality and decided that she would act as the per uh, patron mother of the wizards. Although wizards are not considered as a separate race, they have always had their own goddess to pray tribute to. Very interesting. Uh, particularly the fact that we find that book there at all. Interesting. It reacted to our source, presumably. The ancient temple. I've seen places like this in books. Never thought I would see something like this in reality. Indeed. It's pretty this, outstanding. This is the archaeological discovery of a lifetime. Indeed. Now this is more like it. That barrier could resist the great acorn itself. Indeed. Bolitus and a diary. Fifteen of Orantian. Orantian? Here begins the account of Wolfram, lead archaeologist. Captain Aureus tells me there may be something worth excavating in the curious cave. I've hired a gaggle of locals with shovels that insist this cave is haunted. But it's amazing that ghosts you can chase away with a heavy purse of gold. Uh, next day. Incredibly, I have never seen cra Incredible, I have never seen craftsmanship like this. Was it a tomb? A temple? The pillars to the seven suggest some religious purpose. There is more, hidden behind a barrier. The workers are grumbling again, but I am an expert on the undead. If their ghost was real, I would know. Idiots. The workers claim I've been meddling with the gods. I only took a small chip from the pillar. I had to test it somehow. And now they've sealed me down here. <laughs> Nothing left but to examine the columns and hope they return. Each of the seven seems tied to an element or a trait. Ralic, Earth, Duna, Air, Tercindilius, Blood, Zolstissa, Fire, Brogir, Muscle, Xanteza, Mind, Maudia, Magic. I... I don't think I'm alone. I was sure I heard a voice as I slept, but I couldn't make it out. It was faint. An echo, almost. It's here. It's real. Whatever it is, it's real. The Guardians help me. Good to know. What a way to die. Down here in this darkness. Poor soul. The curious sculpture comes alive as you reach out to touch it. It thrums with power and throws flickering dancing shadows against the walls. The carving is covered in strange glyphs that feel oddly familiar. They surround a gently glowing stone that makes you think of the night sky rolled into a ball. Press firmly onto the glowing rock. Something shifts within the sculpture and you're knocked back by a sudden burst of energy. The glow from the columns surrounding the barrier fades and the room is still. All right. The Let's try and examine the glyphs. Trying to read the symbols, you hear a faint whispering at the back of your mind, as if you're listening to the echoes of a past age. Your mind swims, and for a moment, the glyphs become clear. You read, "Our first lords' babes with power glowed; our seconds born in blood that flowed; our thirds young to the wind return; our fourths to glowing flames adjourn." Okay. So first lord, power glowed. Uh. I'm probably going to have to write this down because, well, I mean, frankly, I'm not very, I'm not very, uh, excuse me, I wasn't talking into my thing quickly. I'm, I'm not, I'm not very, uh, memory savvy. All right. So first is power. Uh, second is blood, which is Tercindilius, I believe. The third, wind. The fourth, Flames, which is Zolstissa. Uh, we're matching this up to the book, by the way, is what we're doing. Our fifth Lord's Cubs with minds were blessed. Our sixths had brawn beyond the rest. Uh, minds blessed. Five. Minds blessed. Which is uh, the, the imp head and the six had brawn beyond the rest uh muscle <laughs> our seventh's brood spread from earth to glen and thus no king shall rise again our seventh's brood spread from earth to glen and thus no king shall rise again spread okay 
You try to hold your focus as the whispering echo fades, but the letters waver, contorting and merging until they're nothing but meaningless glyphs once more. Okay. A riddle from the past. Or maybe a riddle about the past. Indeed. Let's have a look. Um, let's have a look here. So, first is power. Not entirely sure. Second is blood, that's Tercidilius. Third is wind, which is Duna. Fourth is flames, which is Zolstissa. Fifth is minds blessed, so is Anteza. Sixth is a muscle, which is Vergir. And seventh is spread across everything. From something to Glen. So Relic and Amadia are first and last, but I'm not entirely sure which is which. Uh, let me listen to it again, shall I? The sculpture is cut trying to read this. Your mind swims. You read. Our, Our first was babes, babes with power glowed. Amadia. Born in blood that flowed. Our thirds young to the wind return. Our fourths to glowing flames adjourn. With power glowed. It implies magic to me. Our fifth lord's cubs, yep. seventh brood, spread from earth, earth to, to glen. glen. Okay. And thus, no king shall rise again. I see. So first is uh, first you is Amadia. Um, let's see. Pillar of relic, pillar of Zanteza, pillar of Rogia, pillar of Tercendilius, pillar of Duna, pillar of Soul Sister, and pillar of Amadia. So first is Amadia. Let's go activate the first pillar, shall we? Um, there may also be some stuff for me to collect in here. I don't know. We'll see. Hmm. Nothing noticeable. Let's go, Amadia. It's Amadia, the mother of wizards. Uh, followed by Tercendilius, which is over here, I believe. What do you mean you can't reach? Walk over there. So Amadia, followed by Tercendilius, followed by Duna. Tercendilius. Poet and patron god of the elves. Duna. Duna, the stoutest of the seven. No wonder the dwarves pray to him. Zolstissa. Blessed Zolstissa. Hmm. I love the fact that the Red Prince is somewhat devout. <laughs> Makes sense considering his nobility. Uh, so the next is Mines, which is going to be not Vrogir. Zanteza. Uh, Zanteza, the goddess of mirth, worshipped by imps. Muscle is going to be Vrogir. The god of the orbs, Vrogir. And finally, um, I'm going to give it a quick save. We have Earth Relic. Relic. I used to pray to you when I was young. That's it. We're through. What infernal business is this? Oh, I'm too heavy. Apparently these things are heavy as shit. Uh, one, identify it, please. Am I still overweight? I am. So take the stone tablet as well. And the book and the knife I'll keep. Alright, sweet. Um, I'm actually going to put uh, what's her face up there? It'll take her a while to get up there, but I think it's worth it. Because I believe, um... I don't think we have to fight here, but if we end up getting into a fight, then it'll be worth me having her up here. From memory. Cool, that'll do. Alright. I wonder what they did in life to deserve such a resting place. 
The creature looks down from its perch, trembling. It crawled out of that sarcophagus as if it had forgotten how to move its limbs. It turns to you, and you see its face is covered by an intricate mask. From behind its unmoving lips, you hear a noise. It starts as a groaning, croaking chatter, but slowly becomes more distinct. It's speaking. Uh, Scholar, you can make out, uh, you can't make out any words, but you recognize some sounds. An elvish chirp here, an orcish grunt there. Tell it to wait as you reach for some parchment. The stream of noise cuts off abruptly. After a moment, you hear a jolting, lurching voice. It wears the face of Zol Stissa, but speaks the tongue of beasts. How cruel. Hmm. A terror. I suspected the Seven Lords won the war after they locked me here. But seeing their faces on dumb creatures, a depressing confirmation. So, sister, seven lords, is she talking about the gods? Gods? What is this senseless brain? The seven lords were eternals, just as I am. Deep within your soul, you feel your gods stirring at the sound of the voice. You can feel its anger and fear swelling inside you. Um, I won't actually read through all these. Uh, Ground says she better be talking sense soon. What does it mean if the gods were eternals? Cough boy, she hasn't told you who she is. Scholar, inform the creature that it is sadly mistaken. It was established in the symbol of Unthor Gore, the seven of gods. Um, scoff at the notion people's records go back millennia. You've caught everything. Uh, cough politely, she doesn't told you who she is. The creature leans forward to get a better look at you, clucking and tutting under her breath. It seems to be a simple form at its core. A source that. A walking, unfortunately talking, source that. Fascinating. Mm. I wonder how to extract the source from the vessel without... <gasps> she pulls back suddenly, recoiling in horror. It... it is rotting. Almost imperceptibly, but it decays before my eyes. It must have no more than a century or two left. That's really, really cool. Um, the Eternals are eternal. So the idea of something living and dying is kind of disgusting to them. That's kind of funny. The god within you reacts. Her emotions a cocktail of fury and fear. You hear her voice, demanding that you give her control, demanding your body obey her will. Repress your struggling god and ask what's hiding behind that mask. An Eternal does not answer questions from whatever creatures happen to lumber into view. Especially when there is so much to be learned about their source. What happens to it, I wonder? Does it lie in whatever ditch it falls in, as its body decays? Or... Ah, no, of course. It is harvested. Hmm. The god thrashes against your control. You can feel it hissing that this creature is dangerous, that it cannot be trusted. Yeah, it's interesting here. You can see the true reason why the gods created mortals is so that they could turn them essentially into source batteries. They only last a century, it's nothing to an eternal. So after a century they die and the source is taken back to the gods. To have had the technology of the eternals and made this. How crude. Although effective in its own way. Struggle to contain your god. What does she mean, effective? Effective of what? Poor creature. Created for a soul mm -hmm. purpose. And yet so ignorant of its function. Yeah, I'm not so ignorant. I've kind of figured it out at this point. It is a tool to collect source until it is ready to be collected. Most likely by its creator. Interesting. The skeleton is level 18. And given that face, I can well imagine who your creator may be. What a lazy way to feed one's power. And, and one's, one's ego. ego. Hmm. Fight to contain- sorry, fight to contain your god and ask how it knows all of this. You start to speak, but it's too late. Zor Stissa breaks free, and the voice that emerges from your mouth is not quite your own. A terror you were. An eternity locked away was too good for you. I should have seen you ground to dust and fed to the wind. Your heresies deserve nothing less. We're glowing. 
The figure recoils, as if struck. So, Stissa, what, what happened to you? Did you truly fall so far? Silence. It is your king that has fallen. He and all the other eternal cowards were flung into the void. And the power you were too scared to hunt has made me a god. And yet, here you stand. Small, weak, decaying. I will not even need the Aetiran to grind you into the dust. You feel your god freeze at the mention of this Aetiran. A cold terror settling in your chest. Rest control back from the god and demand to know more about the device. The beast's unruly passenger did not deign to tell it. She did not want her host to know. I crafted a weapon that would leave her an eternal once more. Hmm. You feel your god thrashing against your control. Where? You croak in a voice, not quite your own. Ha! Of course you never found it. You always lacked imagination, my lady. I hid it in these very caves, although I can feel its distance now. Someone has uncovered it. Perhaps they intend to flay the godliness from you. No matter. Given your pathetic state, it is mine to collect at my leisure. Mm. As for you, you monstrosity, you were designed to be defective. You were built to die. And I rather think it is time you fulfilled your function. But do not fear. I shall put your source to good use. And here we have a fight. Earth resistance, fire resistance, that's fine. You can resist those, I don't care. I don't like the fact that she summons more of these fuckers. They really should have had just like jump as a as a as a general rule. Jesus. The cripple failed. I'm really glad the cripple is failing because I may not be able to win this. That's why I quick saved. gonna suck but I'm gonna well fuck me I guess uh... okay Maybe. She's stealing sauce, but... They still have their flight. I don't think it matters, I think I'm dead. Uh, doesn't have its flight, okay. I mean, Zolstis is gonna kill me anyway. Alright. Uh, let's load the auto save and see if I can do better. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll just cut to my successful attempt at this. And we'll see how that goes, shall we?
She's resistant to water and air, which kind of sucks. Um, not a whole lot I can do about that, really. Um, I just need to do a bunch of magic damage. It's the only thing I can really do. Oh, Drain gets blo blocked by magic armor. I was unaware of that. Um, uh, shocked. Chameleon cloak it. Hmm. 
Run, Solara. Okay. We're slowly getting through her magic armor. As long as she doesn't have... That's fine-ish. Froze both of them. Got myself back up to full health. All nice things. Um, give myself a bit more armor. Global calling to get through a bit more of her magic armor. I think she can only summon two of them at a time. Fucking nearly killed Solora. Um. That could freeze it. Great. Let's get up here. I should be able to see the red prince from here. Heal yourself, I guess. Um, and then peace of mind on the Red Prince as well. Stealing source back. She has infinite source essentially in this fight, which is ridiculous. But I don't think she can spawn more than two. How many source points does she have? That's terrifying. Um, I think I now need to kite the wolves, if at all possible. That's good. That's fine. Let's get the fuck out of there. I think. Let's do this first. Bone cage. It's 1100 armor, that's something. Technically undead. She is undead. I could heal her to death, but I think I'm better off healing myself. Or Loisa, as the case may be. I need to get through magic armor. That's the reality of the situation. They may kill Loisa here. Yep, she needed to block that. Is the res the the truth of the situation? don't know what to do. I think I want to raise Loisa again.
sure. All I can really do is continuously do air and water damage to her, which is not the best idea. I should freeze that one at the very least. Great. Great. Alright, she can't hit Lucifer from there, I don't think. She's just stealing more sauce. Jesus fucking Christ. You can only do physical damage, I'm not too worried, but Jesus fucking Christ. No idea what to do. Um, another swap. Let's run two up. I can't even hit her. Um, go invisible. Turn. He's dead. <sighs> um. hidden. Oh my god, I'm hidden. See, the thing is, I'm hidden, but... So what? <laughs> like... I'm gonna do a quick save here, by the way. Um... I got myself hidden. That's nice. So I'm now full health. I still can't do enough damage to get through this. Um... 900... <laughs> She... let's examine. She has less water resistance than she does air resistance. actually starting to do some damage is nice. Could very much end up dead here. 
slowly getting through that fucking armor. Yep, that's fine. Thousand armor, good. Yep. I'm sending him water currently, so let's take advantage of that. Finally. Fucking finally, um... And then rain. That freezes her. Holy fuck. Um... He's frozen too, so I don't care too much. Just damage as much as possible. Stunned. That's fine. Just more damage. As much damage as possible. I need to keep her stunned, essentially. It's kind of annoying. Um, that'll entangle her. Currently stunned. Oh, she's entangled, so I can't do that. Cool. Um, source vampirism. I need to get closer. I want to keep the height advantage if at all possible. Cool. Source vampirism. Annoying. Apparently she's invalid, which I think is bullshit, but... Do some regeneration here. I mean, she's chilled. Frozen. Okay, cool. Shields up. Give myself more armor. I think next turn he has a bunch of shit up that he can do. Clear minded. Yep. I think we got this. Okay. Fucking barely, but I think we got this. Um. Okay. I think I'm going to start eating through physical armor as well, just in case, because I want to keep these for control more than I want to necessarily have to deal with anything else. Um... Like, she's still frozen currently, so there's no point in doing anything else, as far as I can tell. Um, keep this so we can freeze next turn. I 
can do some damage there with Fossil Strike. It's only 600 health, that's pretty easily doable. Perfect. Alright, I think this bitch is dead. Holy shit. <laughs> Give me all your crap. I'm carrying too much. Of course I am. Identify. Cool stuff that I'm not gonna use. Identify. Identify. Provoke can go in the book bag. Two wits, two pyro, one hydro, one necro. That's fantastic. Um, what are you wearing? Intelligence, Constitution, Huntsman, Telekinesis. That's straight going on. Um. Yeah, that's better for you. Alright, holy shit. I think... We're okay. Um, I may need to just give her... Take this as well. Just so that we've got... A bit better where we are. I've been recording for an hour. Um, I would have sped some of that up. I would have gotten rid of some of that, but... Holy shit. It was a fucking fight. <laughs> give me that sauce, please. Cool, I guess. So that's done. Um, don't think there's anything else in for you for me. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, that was a hard fucking fight. Oh, well, let's just walk through oil. Good to know. Um, all right, yeah. So that was a hard fucking fight. Let's grab some stuff in here because there's some chests apparently that I missed. Turn a lot of fact. That's useful. Um. And the reason that is useful is because it allows me to build what I want to build. I think I looted both of them. I did. There's no more chests in here as far as I can tell. Nope, no more chests. Good to know. I can safely leave. This place is now completely searched, which is cool. Um, I'm walking out of here slowly just in case there's something that happens because I can't remember. It's a pretty significant lore dump they give you about the gods. It's particularly more interesting, like the entirety of the storyline, if you're paying it's Fane, in my opinion, but we're not. Alright, so, that's gonna be it for this episode, by the way. Um, I'm just gonna go through my... my things. Make sure none of them are... Uh, well, all of them are up to date, I should say. Alright, cool. Powerful Awakening. Alright, Riker, we can go to. Jehan, we haven't done yet. We can go talk to Hanag. Uh, Alright, there's st all stuff for next episode. You know what? I'm just... I'm dumbfounded by how hard that was. Um, <laughs> so I'm now in a situation where I'm not even thinking straight. But that's going to be the end of the episode anyway. So, if you liked the video, please leave a like. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time. Where we're going to go talk to Hanag, and then we're going to go talk to Riker, and probably fight Riker, if I were to guess, because he's an evil piece of shit. Uh, then we need to go to Blood Moon Isle. We also need to go find Sahelia's people. We've got a bunch of shit to do. But for now, that's going to be it. So I'll see you next time, guys.